It's actually pronounced Aran. Aran. Yeah. Okay. So we, we've started. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of The Raw Men. And I think we're on 93 now. Uh, and today I'm talking with Cliff Misson, and he's doing something that, if I if I understand it correctly, the way I the way it was explained to me was a worldwide web in a box that uh, that yeah. travels to third world countries. Can you can you fill me in on what that is that you do? <laughs> okay, thanks, Aaron. So, well, you know, the bulk of the world isn't connected to the internet. And, uh, you know, we hear stories about, you know, everybody in Africa has a smartphone and things like that. It's not true. Um, and even if they have a smartphone, they may not be able to afford to be on the Internet. I have a friend in Ghana who reports that it costs him about $2 to download a single YouTube video. Um, so those of us who live inside the Internet bubble, we're pretty uh, savvy about using these technologies. But, um, and we live in a media-rich world. Uh, but uh, the bulk of the human population uh, just isn't there yet. Uh, there are a lot of programs to try to get internet to people who don't have it, but that's really expensive. Um, the so very idea what we do $2. is... Uh, the very idea of paying $2 per video, I mean, I'm trying to imagine just how much I would spend in any given day. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And people are when people do have the internet, they're like they're they avoid video, they avoid PDF files, anything that's going to download take a long time. So what we do is uh, this this grew out of uh, eighteen years ago. I was teaching in Nigeria, and uh, I had computers with me because I took thirty six boxes of computers on the airplane <laughs> to. To, with with me to uh, to this university, but we didn't have the internet, and so I asked one of my graduate assistants, "Could you please just copy a website, put it on a DVD, and send it to me?" And she did, and she copied a number of them. And the next day, we had our first case of internet addiction. A young man who just wanted to sit there and plow through this information like he had never seen before. And he didn't want to go to class. He didn't break for food. <laughs> right? He was just into it. And I realized right then that was the spark, that this, this is a really good model. Because since the beginning of computers and the internet, we have been caching information, um, storing it in places so it's easier for people to get a hold of it. So uh, right now, the Wider Net Project, we've been around for 18 years. We have gotten permission from thousands of authors and publishers of websites. I hope I can have your your uh, uh, your web blog. Yes, and absolutely. Uh, <laughs> absolutely, please. Great, great. Yeah, we have we have radio shows. We have uh, um, uh, we have the entire Wikipedia, the entire Khan Academy. We have all the TED Talks. Um, so three thousand websites on a single hard drive, and I've got one right here. Uh, it's about the size of a paperback book. Six terabytes of 35 million documents on a little device. And so when people get this eGranary digital library, they, they just uh, they purchase one of these from them. We, we sell them at a highly subsidized rate. And they hook it up to their local area network, and a thousand people can share that hard drive. And because their local area network is really fast, they're opening up videos in seconds. And there's no additional, there's no, no download costs, no worries. So um, we built into it a search engine. So you can do word searches. It's got a catalog. Librarians have cataloged tens of thousands of resources. Everything to make it easier for people to use. That's outstanding. It's just, I'm just trying to relate to that. So, so where where have you taken this so far? Well, it's uh, I've taken it to a lot of places in Sub-Saharan Africa and Papua New Guinea. But we have um, we have people in twelve countries now. Young young technically talented people called field associates, and their job is to wander around, promote this idea. Um, do the installation, do the training, right? And they make money doing that. We don't pay any salaries, but they get commissions and they get paid for training. And um, so we're in, 
We have 2,000 locations around the developed world. Uh, we even have one in North Korea, of all places. Um, India. Um, we have a couple here in America and really rural communities where they have trouble with internet. And we have 25 in prisons around the US. There's another group of people who can't be on the internet. So we deliver it to them. Okay, well, yeah, I, I like, I like uh, all of that. Just, uh, people may wonder you know, where in the United States we have internet problems. I remember a road trip to Salt Lake City and spending a good deal of time in, like in the Four Corners area where we have n none of our cell phones can get a signal anywhere. Right, right, three, right. Three days out in the wilderness like that where uh, mm -hmm. yeah. you got anything? Nope, yeah. no bars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just on a, on a uh, family vacation in Forks, Washington, right out on the coast, and we had to drive into town if we wanted to use our, our, our cell phones. So. <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah, still places I, like that. I, I know people in the area that I was just talking about, you know, that when they get a, get a call, they have to go outside if they want to talk to somebody. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So here here in, in North Carolina, like in western North Carolina, which is the rural part of the state, the Appalachian Mountains and the like, um, half of the school children there don't have access to Internet outside of school. They don't have it at home. It's not, not in their community. Wow, and that's that's here in the U.S. and and not way out in the desert somewhere. Right, right, yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't know what else to say about that. I'm uh, I'm, I'm kind of impressed that there are vast places where there's where there's just no connection. I guess a lot of people don't realize because we look at a standard projection map and that that, that tends to uh, focus on on Africa and shrink it down a little bit. So we we don't very often realize that Africa is like an enormous continent, much, much bigger than the maps is very flat. So yeah, I guess it right. would be vast areas with like nothing. Mm -hmm. And and how would you even have an internet connection to places like this? Well, you know, a Africa is huge, you know, three times the size of the United States. Um, but it's also, it, you know, it's a great deal of variety there. There are modern cities with skyscrapers and train systems and, um, you know, uh, countries that, that run really great airlines and things like that. So there's wealth in Africa and it's starting to build up. And, you know, I've been working in Africa since 1982. And I know that Africa isn't developing fast enough for most Africans. But what I see every time I go is just things improving dramatically you know, one year to the next. Um, so in a capital C, you know, the corporations, the uh, people who have money, the wealthy, uh, especially the children of the wealthy have internet, they have smartphones, they're connected. Um, and, you know, it's a great leveler because once you, as long as you can afford it and you're on the internet, then you're, you know, sort of equal in communication capacity with everybody else. But you don't have to go far off the, uh, off the beaten path to find uh, you know, people who don't have anything, no phone, uh, no internet. I was, when I was traveling in Kenya uh, last month, I arrived in the capital city at a major um, international airport. And the first thing I had to do is buy a SIM card for my cell phone, a local SIM card. So I buy that SIM card and I pay for about an hour's worth of talk time and 10 gigabytes of download and that's that's what you do you you you, you purchase um like little scratch off cards on the street corner and it puts credit into your phone very few people are doing sort of the buffet internet that we do here pay one price eat as much as you want so um i get this card and it works perfectly in the capital city of nairobi and it works perfectly i go up country to give a lecture at a uh, uh University of Country, and it works perfectly there. And then I go to this hospital, this teaching hospital, where I'm going to be working for six days, and it doesn't work at all. And everybody there in the town is saying, oh, yeah, no, you can't use that company. You have to use another company if you're going to get a connection here. And unfortunately, I couldn't buy a SIM card for the other company because I was a foreigner, and nobody in town had a license to sell a SIM card to a foreigner. So my, uh, my, my cell conversations involve me climbing to the top of a nearby hill 
<laughs> and, and getting a little bit of connectivity. Uh, we um, did something similar when we went to Standing Rock. There's there was a there was a hill at the at the Standing Rock site. It was where you could just barely get connection. It's sort of like everybody's migrating up, like holding their cell phones up in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what kind exactly. of setup do you well, have you know. You when you when you bring the the, the web to uh, to these people, you know the, your your web in a box. What give me an idea of the layout of what you set up there? I mean, are we talk about a bunch of laptops or what's going on? Well, you know, a, a lot of the places that we're working in hospitals, clinics, uh, universities, secondary schools, they might have a few computers already. Um, Sometimes we coach them on how to wire them together so they have them, you know, they can put them into a network. Sometimes they're already networked. Okay. Uh, there are places where we've worked where they had a grant and they had the internet and they had 20 computers in a lab and then the grant money ran out and the internet ran out and so now they're using this. There are places where people just use it alongside the internet because the internet is slow and unreliable it can go off for days but the granary is right there and it's constantly available to them so, so um, there are all kinds of uh, we need to repeat that name because I, I don't think we brought up the, the name e-granary the e-granary yeah e-granary storing the seeds of knowledge and if you go into an african village uh traditional african village there will be a granary and it'll be right next to the farmer's hut and it's built up off the ground so that the uh, uh, rats and other vermin can't get into it and protect it from the birds. And that is his, his family's survival. If anything happens to those grains, he's got nothing to plant the next year. So the, uh, um, the community and the farmer and his family, they watch this thing very carefully. And during some parts of the season, the children will actually sleep out around the granary to keep the birds and, and other creatures away. So I just love the idea of, you know, these are the seeds of knowledge and they're not some in some foreign place where they can't control access to them. They're right there in their, in their building, in their community, where they can share them freely with each other. So you've got this thing that's it's, uh, multi terabytes, and and I'm I'm just remembering what I got. I got all excited once upon a time when I got a 500 megabyte hard drive, because there was a time when that was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is six terabytes, and we're we're moving to eight terabytes soon. So. Okay. So how, when just, you, when you search out for content, you said you've gotten the entirety of Wikipedia and everything, for example, which is which is amazing to me. Um, are there people that you you're looking to for content, or, or or should people voluntarily contact you to to give content? Sure, and uh, if people have if they have control over resources and they can give us permission, that's great. Right. So if they have a website and they say, "Hey, you guys can have our website," um, it's just a matter of sending an email to librarian at widernet.org. And the librarian will uh, will integrate it, uh, but we also have a lot of experts who help us to put together collections. So, for example, uh, a few years back, friends in Zambia at the medical school there wanted to build a collection of resources for teaching medicine, and they didn't want to have to stop and teach all of these medical professionals to become expert searchers because they hadn't you know, used the internet that much. So we built a collection, a portal, an interface for them so they could get to the resources they wanted to very quickly. And so for that, we interview them and say, what it is, what it, you know, what are you guys teaching? What kind of what are the resources you want? And then we put it out to the community, crowdsourced it. And people gave us great ideas about resources that they use to teach medicine. And, uh, um, and then we reach out for permission to the you know, authors and publishers and, and, uh, and build it that way. So we try to, you know, some, hey, Wikipedia was pretty obvious, <laughs> right? Because that's a, it's a, a major website and people just love it. Um, other things, oftentimes we're asked by people out in the field, you know, we need more information on growing cocoa or something like that. And that's what we do. We, you know, go out and find the information for them. There's one other aspect to the granary that is actually the part that I adore the most. And that is, 
it's kind of like having an ISP, an internet service provider, in a box because the users can set up accounts on this thing and make their own websites. And there's an extra, uh, extra storage on the drive so they can upload their own content. So if they're making videos with their cell phone, they're translating things into their local language, they're creating new documents in PowerPoint and Microsoft Word and all that, they can instantly upload it and share it with each other. And, you know, for most of us, uh, the intra intranet at our office, at our school, is, um, is what we use, you know, uses the most of our bandwidth, most of our time is, uh, is using even in our own house if we have a network in our house it's our intranet that we use the most so um, it's a powerful device we can people can start telling their stories in a digital format and you know, when I go out and I give talks and people say you know I say you know two-thirds of the world can't you you know can't use the internet and some smarmy person will say well you know they don't know what they're missing and I like to turn that around and say, no, we don't know what we're missing because two thirds of the best stories, two thirds of the best ideas, two thirds of the best brains on this planet are not connected. And um, uh, getting them connected is important, not just for them, but for us. And um, uh, I mean, there's, since the beginning of time, there is no one thing that has improved the human condition consistently except for education and everywhere I go everywhere I go I meet parents and grandparents who will who will sacrifice everything they have for their child's education just like here so this is the the important thing making it accessible making it work for them taking their knowledge and making it available so they can share it with each other that is outstanding. So how do, how do people contact you, or what links uh, would I need to put into the you know information bar for people to get in touch with us, or, or with you? How or would that do? Do you, do you have a do you have a website? That people go well, to? Um, do you have a do you have a website? Yeah, just just widernet.org. That, okay, that's us casting a wider net. That's All right, the idea there. With the email address that you mentioned for if you want to if, if people want to connect to you. I'm sorry. If people want to connect to you to uh, share content. Get up here. <laughs> <laughs> if people want to connect to you to share content, I'll put down the email address that you uh, mentioned down before. You said library okay. something. Hello. Looks like we may have lost you. Are you are you just frozen? And um. Okay. Our website just wider net. All right. Well, very good. It's it's strange that we seem to be having. Well, look at there. There we <laughs> we we lost him. I guess he's gone to his own internet. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Bye bye.